Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. We're finding out that through the years, a lot of people have done cartwheels publicly. <laughs> uh, our guest today, including Elliot Friedman, are sponsored by Passant Motors. May Day, it's May Days at Passant Motors. Purchase a vehicle in the month of May and choose one of three great promotional options. May Days only at Passant Motors. Learn more at PassantMotors.com. Barry Trott's not doing uh, cartwheels today. He's been let go as uh, head coach of the New York Islanders after four years there. Uh, here to talk about that and all matters NHL, Elliot Friedman from Hockey Night in Canada and the 32 Thoughts podcast. How are you, sir? I'm good, guys. How are you guys doing today? Good, very good. well. Very very well. Uh, Barry Trotz uh, out uh, as uh, head coach of the New York Islanders. Did that take you by surprise, Elliot? Yes, yes, absolutely it did, Don. Now, there were some rumblings in the past couple of weeks that maybe something like this could potentially happen. But as you know, uh, the, with Lou Lamorello, he's not going to tell us anything until he is good and ready. So I was a little bit surprised. Uh, now, I have heard a little bit that um, maybe that some of the information gained in the exit meetings was that maybe it was time. Uh, for trots in this group of players, which seems incredible to me considering everything they'd accomplished mm -hmm. together last year, going to game seven against Tampa and losing one nothing in a team that blew out Montreal in the Stanley Cup final. But I think there's something to it. I, I, I think that just this group had been together and it wasn't really working as well anymore. But Barry Trotz will land on his feet and I think there will be teams falling all over themselves to hire him. Is there an obvious landing spot in Winnipeg? I, I do think so, Don. I, I think the Jets would be crazy not to be all over him. But I think Philadelphia, you know, I, I, I could see the Flyers being very interested in him. Uh, I could see a team like, you know, let's see what happens in these playoffs. If Rick Bonus doesn't go back to Dallas, I could see him making a lot of sense there. I could see, you know, maybe some of these teams, like what's Vegas thinking? Are they coming back with DeBoer? Um, you know, just there's a lot of situations like that I look around at, Don, and I, I think if you're a coach right now and you're not sure about your situation, you're probably very nervous because Barry Trotz is available. Elliot, let's get to the, the big one in Vancouver, uh, the future of uh, Bruce Boudreaux. What are you hearing? I think, Rick, he's coming back. I, I heard that, you know, you report about the Guzmanko meeting on Friday that he met with the by Zoom with the Canucks. I understand that Boudreaux was part of that meeting. And, um, you know, one of the things that Guzmanko has told teams is that, you know, there's, there's a lot of Russian players. They, they like certain cities. Some cities are better for Russians than others. But I don't think that's necessarily the, the case with him. I think he's looking for a situation where he can be successful, where he's given an offensive role with a coach who believes in offensive players. Also, because, because of the way the salary cap works, he can only sign a one-year deal. So he's want to be, going to want to be set up in a situation where he feels that he's going to have a chance for success to get another contract out of it. So I, I heard Boudreau was there. I heard Boudreau was very positive about him. Um, and, you know, I, I think he painted a picture of this would be, Vancouver would be a place where he would be in that role. And so it just would seem, I mean, crazier things have happened. This whole Boudreau situation to me is crazy to begin with. But uh, I just find it really odd that, you know, they would say, oh, okay, uh, Boudreau is, is part of this meeting and now he's not going to be part of the team. The other thing I would just say about, um, about your interest in Kuzmenko is, is Patrick Alvin's had a lot of interest in him for yeah. a long time. Yeah, big time. So I, I think it goes by just the coach, but I heard Boudreau made a good impression in terms of what he believed and what he thought and how Kuzmenko could fit. Uh, you had a... On Saturday, Hockey Night Canada talking about Vancouver and possible offer sheets this summer. Can you explain, Elliot? Yeah, well, I, I just think that it was Jeff Moore who talked about it, and 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 I, I think unfortunately that got mucked up a little bit. Um, you know, with the with the Hammonick pick, it would be at the draft um, as opposed to uh, after uh, because the, the uh, offer sheets happen after the draft, but. 
I do think in general what he was trying to paint is that I think the Canucks are going to be a very aggressive team in terms of what they're willing to try and what they're willing to think of. That's always been Jim Rutherford's MO. I don't believe it's going to be any different here. Obviously, you guys have some internal business you're going to try to take care of first with the likes of uh, Besser and Horvat and Miller. But I, I think you're going to um, I think there's going to be a lot out there, you know. I don't know if the OAL thing is going to work. It, you know, he's got a lot of control over it and it's a big contract, but I do think the Canucks are trying to see if there's anything they can potentially do there. Uh, Travis Green, do you see him uh, getting something here in the next little while, uh, possibly, uh, Elliot? Yeah, I do think Green's going to be on a number of lists. Um, you know, I'm always, a, I'm always a believer in you have your first job and not everybody's first job goes perfect but you learn what you learn, right? You learn your lessons. You say, this is what I did well, and I'm going to improve on that. And this is what I didn't do well, and I'm going to improve on that. And I think Green is definitely one of those types of people. I've heard that there is interest. I do believe the Canucks are going to be asked for permission to talk to him. And uh, I think there's going to be a few teams. Like I, like I think the, the Trot's availability today has really shaken the market. Um, I don't think Trot's is looking to make a quick decision. I think he needs to deprogram and kind of take a deep breath. But I think, you know, that I think he's going to be at the top of a lot of lists. So I think a lot of other coaches might have to wait and see how this shakes down a bit. But I think Green is definitely going to be in the mix for a few of these. Hey, Elliot, what did you help me out here? Uh, maybe I missed her. What did you say about the OEL situation? With the Canucks? Well, I just think that the Canucks have tried to look around to see if there's a uh, there's a market there at all. And don't okay. forget, OEL has say because he's got the no-move clause. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, first round of the NHL playoffs. Uh, the series are close, save Colorado and Nashville. But 13 of the 28 games so far have been decided by four or more goals. Um, yep. And you could extend that to three. I think eighteen uh, games have been decided by three or more goals. Is, is there any particular reason for that? Is it just one of those things? And is it a concern? I don't know if it's a concern that I think that at the end of the day, Don, like all four series that are at four games, we know we're guaranteed at least six. Mm -hmm. There's only there's only the possibility for one sweep, and I bet you there's going to be some more sixes out there. That's what we want. Um, I, I think the biggest thing, Don, is that. Some of these games are really seeing lopsided and large penalty differentials, like power play penalty kill differentials. Right. Like it's not uncommon to see games where teams have six or seven power plays and the other team might have one or two. And I think that's why we're seeing some blowouts. Uh, also, there have been a couple games like, you know, for example, Pittsburgh Rangers the other night, it was basically a 3 2 game with two empty net goals. So we have seen a couple yeah. of those uh, along the way. But I do think the amount of penalties that are being called, and not every game are they even, especially late, you, you bank in a couple of power play goals and the game looks worse. I actually think the playoffs have been very good and very compelling. I just don't know if I like the amount of penalties being called. Elliot, I'm not so sure if there's such thing as an upset, a real shocker in the Eastern Conference with all teams uh, having finished with 100 points or more. But we, we saw the blowout uh, the other night, Washington versus Florida. What are the Capitals doing well against the favored Panthers? Well, the one thing that they've really done, Don, is they, they gummed up the neutral zone. I think one thing that you, you if you really have a smart coach and intelligent players, you know, it's not like the regular season where you're playing three out of four and you're worried about three different teams in four games and the details slip. Now you know you're getting one team for two weeks. You're going to have a similar game plan all the time. And Washington's got a really good formula right now. They're gumming up uh, the they're gumming up the works in the neutral zone. Their best players are playing their best. They've been very good. Their power play is killing Florida, and they're getting goaltending. I think, that to me, that was always the big question. You would have told me three games in that we would have seen both Vanacek and Samsonov. I would have thought Washington yeah. would be in trouble, but we've seen both of them, and they're up a game. Dallas, uh, Calgary, heck of a game on Saturday. <laughs> Just stop. Uh, I... <laughs> You yeah, know, Elliot knows no, what you're talking no, I'm about. I'm not talking about that, Elliot. I'm talking about the game. Uh, are you surprised the Stars are up to <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, you're good. Don't go there, Elliot. Stars, are you surprised they're up to one? You know, I, I have to tell you a couple of funny stories about that. First of all, I can't tell you how many people have sent me her Instagram profile. That's it. Uh, <laughs> we, we got it. We got it, too. I, I kept on saying, guys, this is a work phone. This is this is not, <laughs> not a good idea. And and, and, and secondly, I, I want to ask Rick Bonus after the series is over, how many people sent him the pictures? 
because I can only imagine what he's oh, going yeah. like after the game on Saturday night. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I think Dallas is playing exactly the way that, that, we, that we thought they were going to play. They were going to turn these games into a coin flip and play low event hockey. They've accomplished exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Um, you know, I think one thing that Calgary has to change is I, I don't care whether who wants to fight him. I think Matthew Kachuk has to stay on the ice. Um, yeah. As good as a player as John yes. Klingberg is, yeah. it's a victory for Dallas when John Klingberg is in the penalty box and so is Matthew Kachuk. Yep. Like that's a bad trade for the Flames. Kachuk this year is going to be, could be a first team all-star winger. Mm-hmm. Yep. and uh, he had a great season, and Calgary needs him on the ice. Enough with the trying to fight with people. Let's go out there and play the game. Yeah. yeah. John, and, and John his hand, Klingberg, of all people. And, and did you see uh, Kachuk in the, in, in the box with his hand? It was bleeding. Last thing you want is that guy not only in the box, but to injure his hand in a fight. 100%, Rick. Smartest thing you've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> That's not saying much. Big ratings for Calgary and Dallas tonight. Uh, uh, big ratings, big ratings. Uh, Elliot, thanks no, so much. I, I will say this: those two, the, if we get multiple game sevens on Saturday <laughs> night with Toronto and Boston, uh, with Toronto and Edmonton, we're going to have a country on edge, and we're going to have half the country cheering for them to win, and yeah. half the country <laughs> hate watching them to lose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big time. Good point, <laughs> Elliot. Thanks for this. Talk to you in a couple all of right, weeks. Guys. All, all, all right. right, a couple of weeks. Great Thank job, you, Elliot. Uh, great job uh, on hockey day in Canada, as always.